By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we have more magic for you from the Lord of the Jank, the budget tournament that I organized. And if you want to know more about the specifics of this tournament, the budget rules and stuff like that, then you can check out the description below where I kind of explain how we determine budget and how we determine the value of each of the decks that are competing in this tournament. Now, um, today I am playing against the an Urnum Burnham deck of a mule, and I am playing with my zombie disco deck still. Now, before I'm gonna go to the actual deck decks, I just wanna point out that you can also find timestamps, again, in the description below, and those timestamps will allow you to go straight forward to the game. So if you wanna skip the deck deck, no problem, check the description below, and there you will find a timestamp that says MTG Games, Click on that and that will take you straight to the games themselves. Now here we are going to continue with the deck deck and I'm going to start with my deck Zombie Disco. And here we see my Zombie Disco deck. So um, I've actually played three matches already with this deck and this is uh, match number four in the group stage. I've managed to win two of those matches with two to one, lose one match with one to two. So that means that in this final match, I need to win at least one game, preferably two games, to find myself in the top eight with this deck. And that would be that would be a pretty big accomplishment if I say so myself, because uh, I mean, this deck does have an idea behind it. Uh, as you can see, I'm playing with four zombie masters. Now zombie masters, two black and one to cast for a two, three that gives all the zombies regeneration for one black and swamp walk. So basically I've built my deck around those two abilities. Now first talk about the swamp walk. I'm playing with four evil presence. Evil presence is one black to cast for an enchant land that turns any land into a basic swamp. So I basically use my um, my evil presence to give a swamp to my opponent, and then I have swamp walk creatures, and I walk all over him because they're unblockable. As you can see, I'm also playing with two bock rafts, one black and uh, three for a three, three with swamp walk already. So that is one of the strategies. The other strategy is the regeneration strategy. I'm playing with four Nevenerals discs. That means that I can pop my disc um, I can do it often enough because I'm playing with a full playset and then I can regenerate all my zombies. I can also regenerate my Will of the Wisps. That means I will have all my creatures still on the board. My opponent is wiped out of creatures and I can win uh, that way. So that's another route that I can take. I'm also playing with two animate deaths as you can see next to the evil presences. An animate death really connects well with that uh, Nevenerals disc strategy. So that's kind of my deck. Um, now let's take a look at the deck of my opponent, Emil, who's playing with Urnum Burnham. And here we see part of the deck of Emil. Unfortunately, I don't have a deck picture, but I do have a pretty good idea of what he wants to do. Uh, it is an Urnum Burnham strategy, and of course that refers to the card Urnum Jin that you see here, the green card 4-5 from the Arabian Nights, one green and three, that has a very affordable reprint in Chronicles, and the other part, Burnham, uh, refers to all the burn in these decks. So he's probably playing with four lightning bolts, four chain lightnings. I'm expecting fireballs, disintegrate, stuff like that. So there, there are two strategies in this deck that work together quite well. So you've got your green for the mana dorks. Uh, I believe there are birds of paradise in this deck. So he wants to cast his birds of paradise early to get an early Urnum Jin out or an early Bull Lightning. Those Bull Lightnings, they look really, really scary against my deck. I don't have any first strikers, no black knights in the sideboard. So, I mean, they are going to be a problem for me, definitely. So anyway, so what he wants to do is get his birds of paradise out and play bigger creatures very quickly deal some combat damage with them and then finish off with direct damage. He doesn't need uh, to deal a lot of combat damage, I feel. I mean, if he can just deal like eight, eight, nine, ten 10 damage max with creatures, he's already won the game probably. Having four lightning bolts, four chains, you know, fireballs disintegrate. So he really wants to go quick. It's really an aggressive deck that he's playing with. I think the Curd Apes here are also a really nice addition. They're two, three, you know, possibly if he's got another forest in play. So for one red mana, having a two, three body, that is really, really strong. Um, and you can play with a lot of Arabian Nights in this Lord of the Jank tournament because you will not find a city in a bottle against you. City in a bottle is simply too expensive to be played in this specific tournament. So I think that's very well thought of by a mule. So Burnham, I think it's going to be really tough for me. 
um, to play against this. I think I really have to board in some terrors from my sideboard to deal with the ball lightnings, but especially game one, it's going to be really rough for me. But you know what? You always have a chance. So uh, let's go to the games and let's see how this is going to end up. Game number one. And as you can see, I am still shuffling up. Look at those sleeves by Emil. Really sweet see-through sleeves. Kind of nice, you know. The back of the magic card is pretty sweet. Shuffling up. Does that mean I'm taking a mulligan or am I still shuffling? That's kind of the question here. So just to kind of explain while I'm shuffling anyway, although let's, okay, let's have a look. Drawing seven. And looking at my hand. Yeah, putting one card. So I took a mulligan here, putting one card on the bottom, starting with six. And Emil's on the play here, starting with a basic mountain. There is a basic swamp. Passing turn here. So no early start for me with the ritual. City of Brass, tapping both, taking a damage. And there's a Sylvan Library. That is a pretty sweet card. Very good news for Emil here. I mean, he's the aggro player. He doesn't mind paying some life to kind of get ahead in the game and deal the first damage. He just wants ammunition. Is there, there's a ball lightning. <laughs> oh, yeah, this is what Emil wants to do. Look at that. So dealing six damage, dropping here to 14. And now I've got a Scave Zombies turn three, a 2-2 vanilla. And Scave Zombies did a lot of work for me in this tournament. Uh, but I wonder what I can do here against Emil. Tapping four, there's an Urnum. Urnum Jin. And I'm tapping four as well, finding a Nevenerals disc. So at least that's that's pretty good for me. I can use the disc to get rid of the Urnum and the Sylvan Library. And all I lose is Escape Zombies. So that's not too bad. Probably going to swing in here with the Urnum. And maybe I should just chum block. Ooh, there's actually a Lightning Bolt on the Escape Zombie. And that means he can now swing in for six. Oh, actually swinging in for seven because he can pump with the other one. Look at my life total. I'm on seven. We just started this game. Come on. <laughs> Give me a chance. Untapping here. There's there's not much that I can do. I mean, I just have to use the disc next turn. But remember, I'm already on seven against an opponent that plays with tons and tons of burns. So he can just start killing me using burn spells. I wonder... And he's looking at his hand. Attacking and and it's really smarty from Emil, by the way, that he's not animating his Mishra's factories. And taking a damage from his own City of Brass and playing Scavenger Folk. I mean, things are still looking really bad for me even after that disc activation. There is a Nightmare. That is pretty cool. So I've got a 5-5 five, five Flyer. Who knows? Maybe I can survive a couple of turns. And actually an Evil Presence on one of his uh, Mishra's factories. So, and he's, yeah, he's just uh, flipping it to show that that's the one that I played Evil Presence on. Okay, not too bad. I'm still in the game. 5-5 five, five Flyer. I don't think he can kill me. Well, he can kill me with direct damage, but not at least with what he has on the board. Not with combat damage. Although, I mean, he is playing with four bull lightning, I think, so it's really risky. There is an Elfish Archer dropping to 15, passing turn here. The thing is, I can't really, I can't attack with my Nightmare, because then I'm basically killing myself. Playing a Weakness on the Scavenger Folk. And, okay, that's why, and playing another Neverneural's Disc. I kind of want to have that Neverneural's Disc, also because then, um, if you would play a bull lightning... I can play a Nevenerals Disc. Okay, this is not really ideal. I guess the best thing for me to do is just not use the Disc. I could also choose to attack him here, dealing 6 damage. My Nightmare is a 6-6, six, six, and then pop the Disc in his turn. Choosing not to do that, I just want to keep my Nightmare, I guess. Remember, if I use the Disc, I also lose my Evil Presence and give a Mule... A Mishra's Factory back, which I really don't want to do because I'm on seven. He's attacking now with both. So what I can do here is I can block the Scavenger Folk, take the two damage, go to five. But does that mean that Emil has 
maybe a chain and a bolt in hand or something like that. This is a really difficult decision. That's probably why I'm thinking. I'm like, why would you attack with your scavenger folk? You want me to block the scavenger folk. At the same time, I'm like, if I block the elfish archer, I'll be on six and I'll still be in double bolt range. So I'm choosing to block the scavenger folk. Scavenger folk dies, gonna go to five. And will we see a double bolt? Gonna go to two. And regrowth. <laughs> okay, anyway, we see a double bolt, but then with the regrowth in between. Yeah, I was kind of, the writing was on the wall, as they say. When, when Emil attacked, I kind of knew. Okay, so we're gonna dig into our sideboards. I'm definitely gonna put some uh, terrors in to deal with those bull lightnings, and we'll catch back, uh, we'll get back into this game uh, at the start of game number two. Game number two, at least I'm on the play. Hopefully I don't have to take another mulligan. Because I think I need, like, I really need a good hand to kind of win from this aggro strategy. Remember, there's nothing I can do against direct damage. So when he, when he just casts something to the face, to the dome, as they say, there's nothing I can do against it. No counter spells. You know, drain life is kind of a way to get something back. Look at this. Again, taking a mulligan here, starting on six. Being on the play means that I only have five cards in hand now, so already have a disadvantage where a meal is on the draw. So that means after that land, he still has got seven in hand. But hey, let's see if I can uh, if I can make it work. At least there's something, a bad moon. So maybe next turn I can cast uh, Zombie Master or Escape Zombies, getting that nice bonus of the bad moon. There's a second red here from a meal. At least he doesn't have a quick opening. That's something, putting a chain lightning to the face, gonna drop to 17. But no green mana, so no Birds of Paradise or, you know, any early aggression here from Emil. So that's pretty good news for me. But I have to pass turn here. Only two swamps in hand. Oh, man. Emil casting a forest. And I'm probably going to change that forest now with my evil presence into a swamp. Drawing into another forest. Ah, that is bad luck for me here. Playing an Urnum Jinn. Also changing that other force, really trying to cancel out one of his two colors. But the Urnum is already on the table. Look at that, dropping to 13. I really need a terror. Not finding anything. This could be a really short game. And there is a terror. Okay, the terror came in from the sideboard, by the way. Another Urnum. Uh-oh. Bad news for me. At least finding a land here. Finally got three lands, which is kind of important playing another evil presence the problem is the evil presence has kind of come too late after Emil has already cast his urnum and that's another reason why urnum is a really strong card you only need one green for the urnum and playing swamp number four casting a book craft so kind of i've got on the table what i want to have i mean i've got a four four swamp walker the problem is my opponent has a 4-5 and I'm on 9. Tapping 5, there is a Fireball taking care of the Bokrath. Attacking me again, going to go down to 5 life. Playing another Swamp, what can I really do here? Tapping 4, another Bokrath. If he attacks, I mean, should I chump block? Probably not, just go to 1 and see if I can make it work. Okay, I guess that's not an option now. And yeah, double bolt. <laughs> Again, dying here to double bolt. There's really not much I can do against this. I really need to have a great draw to stand a chance. We are going to play game number three, so stick around for that one. Game number three. So I'm down two games. The nice thing about this tournament is you get a point for each game you win. So even if I lose this one to two, um, I still get a point, which is kind of nice. I think looking at my standings in the pool for Lord of the Jank, I had to win this one two to one. So, but at least let's see if I can get a point. So I think I'm, al I'm already out of the tournament, but who knows, maybe I can win this one and by some miracle still qualify for top eight. Uh, play the Swamp here past turn to Emil. There is a Mishra's Factory. Second Swamp, and again, you know, I'm not taking a mulligan. It's not as bad as the previous two games, but I don't have a quick opening. And I, I feel if I want to win against Emil in this matchup, 
I need to really have a good draw and Emil needs to have a bad draw basically. So there's some early aggression from Emil. At least he's not finding any colored mana or, you know, not playing them out. This is pretty nice. If it can stick the Royal Assassin, it can be really a, a, a problem for Emil. The problem is that, yeah, this is the problem. The Lightning Bolt's in the chain. So he's taking care of my Royal Assassin very quickly. I'm going to drop here to 16. And I'm finding Escape Zombies. I wonder if I had the Escape Zombies in hand before, because then it would have been a better strategy to first play the Escape Zombies, kind of trying to lure out that Bolt instead of playing my uh, valuable Royal Assassin straight away. Anyway, I didn't do that. And now he's attacking with a single factory because he can pump it with the other factory. And um, so he's attacking first. And when I declare no blockers, he's pumping it to 3-3. Three, three. Gonna drop down to 13. Untapping now. Need a bad moon or something. Another scave zombies. Interesting, I'm not attacking. So I guess I want to go for a double block next turn. There is a bull lightning. Ay ay ay, that is pretty painful. Six damage. I'm actually choosing to throw escape zombies in front of the bus. That's gonna save me two damage. Gonna go to nine. Playing a zombie master. At least now I can regenerate my scave zombies if Emil decides to attack with his mistress factory. He can choose to grow, go the aggressive route and attack. Oh man, another Bull Lightning. This is really bad news. I think Bull Lightning with Lightning Bolt are the two VIPs for Emil for this uh, matchup here. Attacking with both. And um, what to do here? I can block on the scape. Am I just going to take all the damage? No, I'm not. I'm on nine. So I, if I take all the damage, I'm dead. I can't even do that because Emil's got the Mishra's factory that he can pump. I mean, I, I can block the Bull Lightning with my scape and regenerate, save some damage. And look at that. I kind of feel forced to do a block in this way that at least I'm still on six. But this is not what I want to do. Tapping to casting Dark Ritual with one open, casting a Bokrath. At least Bokrath is a pretty solid blocker for the Mistress Factories. Look at that, another Mistress Factory. So he could actually attack with one factory, forcing some kind of double block. There's an Urnum. And making it a 2 2. This is interesting. And he wants to attack with the Urnum, but it's still a summoning sickness, so he can't. And he's pumping it up, so we're trading, which he doesn't mind, because he just wants to make sure that I don't have a lot of creatures. There's a Terror on the Urnum, so at least that's something. But I'm, I'm just too low again. In all these games, I'm just behind. Another Scave Zombies. Maybe Scave Zombies is not the best creature in old school. Maybe. And uh, let's see. There's a Birds of Paradise here. And I mean... Mishra's factories are just really good creatures, people. That's just a fact. Look at that. He's going to attack with both and he can pump one of them. Of course, I have to. Well, I don't have to double block, but I feel like a double block is my best option. Is it? I could also block them separate. Yes, I'm double blocking one of the factories and then he's going to pump the other. So I'm now on three. And again, I need a miracle. Remember, I'm playing against a player who's playing with four chains and four bolts. So I do find a mind twist. Usually I then go like, ugh. But in this case, I think it's kind of fair. Unfortunately for me, only two lands go into the bin. Uh, so that means Emil is not even losing any direct damage capability. Um, attacking with both here. So I'm just going to block one. I'm going to go to one life. And okay, a Curtip. Signed Curtip, it seems. That's pretty sweet. At least I'm going to die to a Curtape. I don't mind, man. I'd rather die. Uh, there we see Emil. So I'd rather die to a Curtape than uh, die to a Lightning Bolt. So thank you for that, man. Thank you, Emil, for this matchup. And I guess I, gotta, I got some work to do if I want this deck to be kind of semi-competitive against these uh, direct damage aggro strategies. I did win... Uh, a matchup against an Urn and Burnham deck earlier in this tournament, so I know that I can do it. But it's like I said, I need to have a really good draw. My opponent needs to have a really bad draw. 
you know, maybe in, in, in the right circumstance, I can cut out one of the two colors or the red or the green using my evil presences in the right way. But it is a really tough matchup because there's nothing I really can do to any direct damage. I don't have counter spells, you know, um, I don't have life gain in the deck. Well, one drain life, but that's obviously not enough. So it is a tough matchup. Anyway, congratulations, Emil. And also congratulations with the three points. I believe that means you're actually going to move on to the top eight. So that is really sweet for you. And also thank you for joining the tournament. And thank you for watching another episode of Timmy Talks. Now, if you want to support the channel, uh, you can do so pretty easily. Leave a like, leave a comment. Tell me what you think. How could I improve my zombie disco deck to uh, be better equipped against these direct damage strategies um, and also uh, you can uh, subscribe if you're not a subscriber yet please subscribe youtube really finds that important and will put my videos higher in the ranking whatever however that uh, algorithm works so you would really help me out by becoming a subscriber another thing that you can do is you can sponsor the show by becoming a patron on patreon so there's probably a link popping up right now and you can join Timmy Talks on Patreon. And then you can actually also join into tournaments like this uh, that we organize every once in a while. Talking about Patreon, let's go to the end scroll and let's check out all the fantastic, amazing, wonderful patrons and channel members of Timmy Talks. Ik het als fikker te samba kazee.